dear students welcome to this lecture on migration in to food materials packaging a food component is a very essential for the shelf life of the food where it protects the food from various factors like moisture light oxygen and microorganisms it is therefore important to know the properties of the food packaging materials the first and foremost is the migration limit of the chemicals from the material to the food and also vice versa as the transfer of chemicals from either side of packaging material and food can have a negative impact on the quality and safety of the food food and beverages can easily interact with the materials and can act as a solvents for reactions to drink in fact there is no food which are inert in nature and there is every possible for the chemicals to migrate into the packaging materials so therefore migration is a diffusion process which can be defined as the mass transfer of the chemical molecules from an external source into food by sub microscopic processes any chemical migration into food is important because it can have two impacts of on the food food safety substances used to manufacture packaging materials could be harmful if they migrated to the food and were ingested in large enough quantities food quality migrating substances may impart taint or odor to the food and so reduce consumer appeal objective of this lecture is that to understand the mechanism of migration to learn about chemicals migrating from packaging into food to know about the packaging selection to avoid migration and packaging taints to identify various methods adopted for monitoring the migration let us start with the mechanism of migration migration of chemical substances is a diffusion process subject to both kinetic and thermodynamic control and can be described by diffusion mathematics derived from fick's law the mathematics describe the diffusion process as a function of time temperature thickness of the material amount of chemical in the material partition coefficient and distribution coefficient now we will see about chemicals migrating from packaging into food in detail the food can be contaminated by the migration of the chemicals have involved packaging in direct contact with the food however it is recognized that contamination may occur less frequently from secondary tertiary and even quaternary packaging such as corrugated cotton pallets and containers some of the chemical components in packaging such as printing inks may transfer to the food contact surfaces through this set of process this will be a direct transfer from the external surface of the packaging to the food contact surface during stacking and storage of the packaging the chemicals may then migrate into food transfer can also occur via evaporation and then leach into food via gaseous space some chemicals such as recycled fibers and in components can persist in recycled packaging materials and ultimately migrate into food how mobility of chemicals taking place in the packaging the mobility of chemicals in the packaging material depends on the size and shape of the molecule any interaction it experiences with the material and the intrinsic resistance to the mass transfer that the material presents it is assumed that the chemical compatible with the material if the chemical is not compatible with the material then it could bloom to the surface and give enhanced migration according to the mobility range it can be divided into three general cases impermeable materials permeable materials and porous materials we will discuss about these three cases now first one is impermeable materials 
these are exemplified by hard materials such as metals, glass and ceramics. The materials is an absolute barrier and there is no migration from the interior. Migration is confined to a surface phenomenon only. Next is permeable materials. These are exemplified by plastic materials such as plastics, rubbers and elastomers. The material offers some limited resistance to migration but this can occur not only from the surface but also from the interior of the material. The resistance to the mass transfer depends on the structure, density, crystallinity etc of the material. The last one is porous materials. Paper and bone materials with a heterogeneous open network of fibers with large air spaces or channels, low molecular weight substances in particular can migrate rather rapidly with little hindrance offered. Let us now look about the controlling factors of migration. Migration increases with increased duration of contact, increased temperature of contact, higher levels of the chemicals in the packaging material, surface area of the contact, aggressive foods. Migration decreases with high molecular weight substance in the packaging material, only dry or indirect contact, low diffusivity packaging material, presence of a barrier layer. Let us move to the different categories of packaging materials and their migrants. The packaging materials used in the food industries are divided into the following categories. Plastics, glass and ceramics, metals, paper and paperboard, elastomers, both natural and synthetic and last one is regenerated cellulose fiber. First, we will discuss about paper and paperboard. Paper and paperboard are essentially composed of the pulp from different vegetable sources and are most often used in contact with dry foods. Additives used in this include fillers, starch and derivatives, wet strength sizing agents, retention aids and grease proofing agents, fluorescent whitening agent. Paper and board may be also coated with polymers as polythene and waxes. Recycled fiber is considered as one of the major source of migrants. Mostly used packaging material is polymers. Synthetic polymers have high molecular weights and therefore their biological availability is considered as negligible. However, due to the use of lower molecular weight additives in these polymers and also the presence of trace levels of unreacted monomers, there is a finite potential for human exposure to this lower molecular weight component. Substances that may migrate from plastic materials include monomers and starting substances, catalysts, solvents and the additives. The next type of packaging material is glass. Glass packaging has Yes, its major components silica, sodium and calcium oxides. These components are unlikely to have any significant effect on the safety of foods since they are natural constituents of many foods. Silica is also the major component of food contact ceramics. Clays, another major raw material of the ceramics is composed of alumina, silica and water. But the concern is about glazes and printing inks and thus lead and cadmium are frequently controlled in such materials since they may be present as a contaminants. The next type of packaging material is metal lids. Metal lids used in glass jars may also be a source of potential contaminants like semi herbicide in baby food jars. The last type of packaging material is primary aromatic amines. Primary aromatic amines can be derived from the hydrolysis of aromatic isocyanates used in adhesives and from azote dyes. 
they have been detected in kitchen utensils particularly those made from black nylon components like non intentionally added substances can be present in food contact material and has the potential to migrate into the food some of them are oligomers decomposition products reaction intermediates reaction products impurities in raw materials now let us look some of the examples for migration into food materials first we will see some details about the migration from packaging into cheese the migration of the components from the packaging materials must be taken into account migration of monomers like styrene from polystyrene packages and additives such as plasticizers from films has been seen in cheese packaged in plastic polymers most of the migration studies are performed in the food stimulants because of the standardization analytical determinations and compliance with regulative issues for the given migrant rate of migration and the amount of migrant transferred from the material into the food depends on the contact area of the packaging material and on the nature of food polyolefins and mainly polyethylene showing highest migration rates among the plastics for most additives many research studies on the migration of triclosan and butylated hydroxy toluene from a low density polyethylene film into cheese that contain different amounts of fat and water now let us look about the migration of packaging components in beer the inertness of glass material in which beer is stored and packed makes impossible for any glass component to migrate into beer but the glow clo but the closer linings used for the glass bottles are a potential source of migration into the beer however this does not seem to be an adverse problem direct interaction of beer and aluminum can result in the migration of aluminum ions into the beer affecting beer flavor and also its clarity however applying of an enamel coating on the interior of the cans can prevent such interaction depending on the material which is used for coating the migration components into the beer is analyzed and should be investigated for the safety reasons and possible effect on flavor and other organolytic properties plastic bottles also have the ability for interaction with the beer by transfer of bottle components like monomers plasticizers and antioxidants into beer if multi layer cottons pouches or back in box packaging are used for beer packaging then it is important to test the migration of components of interior plastic layer virgin pet material was shown to prevent the migration of a number of contaminants from the core layer of pet which is piped from the contaminants thus indicating the low solubility or diffusivity of the contaminants in pet let us now discuss few points about migration of packaging components in oil migration is one of the important safety aspect to be considered while selecting a food packaging material plastic additives and residual monomers are the oligomers are not chemically bound to the polymer molecules of the material and can therefore move freely within the polymer matrix as a result at the interface between the packaging material and food they can dissolve in the food product and thus adversely affects the flavor and acceptability of the food the chemical properties of the packaging material will have influence on oil quality from research it is suggested that edible oil should not be stored in the pvc plastic material as migration of vinyl chloride monomer and plasticizers into fatty foods that can lead to the degradation of the oils pet is the most inert plastics which are used for packaging of oil in recent years in spite of the pet monomers 
oligomers, colorants, plasticizers, stabilizers and different additives used for flexibility purposes, these products are all prone to migration. The migration of acetaldehyde from the pet bottle is a major concern as its presence can affect the organoleptic properties of the oil. Now, you will see how migration of food packaging inks, varnishes and chemical occurs. The quality requirements of the appearance of the packaging for product brands are extremely demanding. Therefore, the manufacturers uses different inks and varnishes to attract the consumers. They concern the tone and brightness of the colors and the exact location of the print. Product information must be sufficient and able to communicate with the market. As available space is often limited and consequently the printed text is small, the print must be of high standard with a good quality ink to print. Printing inks also called as packaging inks including varnishes or those manufactured from colorants, binders, solvents and additives. They are applied by printing or varnishing processes such as flexography, offset, gravure printing and roller varnishing. Varnishing also called as coating is a finishing process where rollers apply a thin transparent layer of varnish or lacquer on the printed material where it is used to protect the print from smearing and scratching and also to improve gloss and to even the surface. Varnish is a kind of ink without colorant. It is sometimes also applied to the food contact surface in order to improve resistance towards moisture and fat. Prints are always applied to the outer surface of the food packaging and are not intended to make direct contact with the food. However, lower mole uh, molecular substances in ink migrate easily through the packaging material into the food. Only a few packaging materials such as glass and aluminum foils are barriers to all substances into the ink. Fibrous materials and most kind of plastics do not act as barriers to migrants. The solvents travel easily through packages made of paper, board or plastics. In the case of polyethylene laminated board, the plastic film acts as a barrier to water but not to fat soluble substances. Many substances in the ink can have a noticeable smell or they can penetrate through the substrate and cause taint problems to the packaged food. Food producers should therefore regularly check the deliveries of the packages before accepting the material. Solvents often contain off odorous substances, vegetable oils used in offset prints, printing have a tendency to oxidize. The unsaturated fatty acids undergo auto oxidation reactions resulting in hexanal and other volatile compounds. The reaction is catalyzed by the presence of heavy metals such as iron and copper. Let us now discuss about chemical migration from secondary packaging materials. Transfer of substances from secondary packaging to the foods can be considered to take place by two main reasons. The first one is direct contact. The secondary material directly contacts primary packaging material. Depending on the nature of the substance and the primary packaging material, there may be a partition of the substance from the secondary packaging into the primary packaging and then diffusion through the primary packaging material to the packaged food. Second one is through gas phase. For transfer of this type to occur, substances must have a sufficiently high vapor pressure to be able to enter the air space surrounding the packaging. Once in the vapor phase where plastic primary packaging materials are used, substances may partition into plastic and depending on the diffusion coefficients and the nature of the primary packaging material, they may transfer to the packaged food. In the case of paper or board primary packaging materials, substances volatilized from the secondary packaging material may diffuse through the cellulose fiber network and hence transfer to the foods. Transfer may be prevented or delayed depending on the nature of the primary packaging material. Now we will move into the important part of this lecture. How to select the packaging to avoid migration and 
packaging tines. For the selection of packaging material, it is important to ensure that the material meet the required specification with the relevant legislations. This increases the specific and global migration measurement to check whether the packaging material is safe for use. When selecting the material, it is important to check all the possibility of interaction of food and material and their effects after interaction of food. The potential for the tains will be evaluated by considering the composition of the packaging material where it minimizes with the quantity of the potential migrating components present in the material. The probability that any migrating components present in material may migrate into the food where this depends on the composition of the food that also determines the affinity of migrants for food matrix. The majority of migrating components likely to result in tains which are hydrophobic and so are more likely to present in high fat foods. The impact of migrating compound that has on the food, this depends on strength of flavor in the product. Thus, the migration level depended on the flavor characteristics of the product. Now, we will see about the methods for monitoring the migration. There are two approaches to monitor the occurrence and impact of migration from packaging into food. The first approach is sensory assessment. This is the most standardized approach where a panel estimates a product to determine whether contact with the packaging material has any effect on the sensory properties. The advantage in using this is that it, uh, the advantage of using this is uh, it is a easy for a panel to be assembled and trained. Data obtained is of a great reference to a packaging or food business operator as a panel members detecting any problem that would be apparent for the consumer namely the orthoelectric sensors. But the limitation is it has the inability to diagnose the identified problems as it will be appropriate to use instrumental chemical analysis like chromo chromatographical methods and that can be used to, to identify differences between a suspect packaging sample and a reference sample. This gives the detailed data regarding residual solvents or the monomers, high levels of plasticizers and the presence of any impurities in the product. The most suitable method for testing the differences between the control and the test food samples usually a triangle test this is based on British standard. The food samples from the tanks are placed into the containers for giving to the panel who are given three samples in which two of which are same and the panel should identify which is odd one out with the reason behind it. Care should be taken to prevent distractions like external noise and odor. The second approach is instrumental chemical analysis. This is used to identify both the cause of the observing tainting problems and also routine screening for targeted potential migrants where the GCMS is used. A comparison of the peaks obtained between the tainted food packaging material sample and the reference food packaging material sample is done to identify the analytes that are targeted as a potential migrants. Once the difference is obtained, then the chromatograms of the food samples can be compared with respect to the, those of analytes to be confirmed whether the suggested compound would be responsible for the taint. The limitation of this approach is that it requires the reference sample for comparisons of the peaks or else the GC sniffing technique can be invaluable. The GC outlet is split so that some of the flow is directed to the detector such as an MS and the remaining is passed through a sniffer port where the water is assessed. The tainting components have very low sensory thresholds that results in very low concentration that are easily generated and detect odor but this only give a very small chromatographic peak. Using GC sniffing, the chromatographic retention time of the tainting compound can be determined by response of the sensory assessor and also the identify of the compound confirmed by using mass spectrophotometry. In this technique, 
if there is specific compound caused a pain then it can be regularly screened by establishing a routine chromatographic method or an electronic news is used in line to continually monitor for the potential hazards let me summarize the points so far discussed in the given lecture packaging a food component is a very essential for the self life of the food product where it protects from the food sorry let us summarize the points so far discussed in the given lecture packaging a food component is a very essential for the shelf life of the food where it protects the food from various factors like moisture light oxygen and microorganisms migration is a diffusion process which can be defined as the mass transfer of chemical molecules from an external source into food by sub microscopic processes it is recognized that contamination may occur less frequently from secondary tertiary and even quaternary packaging materials some of the chemical components in packaging such as printing inks may transfer to the food contact surfaces through the set off period transfer of substances from secondary packaging foods can be considered to take place by two main routes they are direct contact and through gas phase for the selection of packaging material it is important to ensure that the material meet the required specification with the relevant regulations sensory assessment and instrumental chemical analysis are the two approaches to monitor the occurrences